I shed my first tear on this bad boy yesterday. Kyle uh, tagged me in a picture of the car going down the track, which is most likely the same pass I wrecked on. And it just was such a beautiful car. I, I really did tear up. And it's not about the money, just about the time and effort. Not just by me, but by everybody who's touched this car or helped with it or gave me a deal on parts or anything really, advice on it. It's just uh, the car represents a lot. Well, guys, Overkill is under the weather and may be done for good. This is one of my favorite things left over from it. Uh, big, big deal, but you know, life goes on. We're gonna show you in the video the wreck, go over the car, what happened to it, and uh, you know, kind of talk about safety, which is very important to me. But first, I wanted to thank everybody who reached out right after the wreck, fans of the car, personal friends. I even had my very first girlfriend uh, from high school reach out to me that I haven't spoken to in probably 25 or 30 years, and that was really nice. Uh, the people I heard from, uh, it was a little shocking uh, how wide and far it went, so I wanna thank everybody for that. I'd also like to really give a huge thank you to Greg Wilborn and Steve Ellis. Greg offered uh, his house for me to bring overkill to since we were so far away from home and the car was really not easy to transport the way it was. We took it to Greg's house and disassembled it. We're gonna show you that later. And Steve Ellis was the key guy there helping me the whole way disassembling it. I really appreciate that, you have no idea. For those of you uh, that have reached out, I've had a few people ask or try to start GoFundMes and donate money and things like that. And while I greatly appreciate it, this is a huge financial hit for anybody. Um, I, I don't deserve that or, and I don't want just donations. Uh, if you have any money to give somebody, give it to somebody in your family who needs it or you know, somebody in your, in your community. Um, this is a very expensive, flashy car and it would be ridiculous of me to take donations to help fix it. This is for fun, bad things happened. I don't have to have that car, although we are gonna do something about it, either rebuild this one or build up a new one, we're still deciding. So, if you do wanna help, I've got a great way for that. I had uh, Kiefer Simpson create a new t-shirt design. For those of you guys that don't know him, he's a, a big time Mustang racer. Uh, him and Haley James are a team. They also teamed up on an apparel deal. So uh, Kiefer does the uh, design work and Haley is doing all the printing work and we're gonna work with them on this t-shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on the screen. For those of you guys that want one of these shirts, just go ahead and click on the link in the description. Uh, we're in pre-order mode right now. I'll go ahead and take orders for about a week and then we'll get the shirts ordered up. So realistically, you know, you'll see a shirt in four to six weeks after purchasing. So I really appreciate it if you guys buy that. And Overkill was a very special car to me and to a lot of people. All the videos on this channel that are GT500 related will live on even though Overkill may not. And uh, it's really helpful to everybody. So uh, I really hope you know, everybody appreciates it and uh, you know, I'm really gonna miss that car. We're gonna go ahead and watch the crash footage and then when we come back, I have some thoughts about safety equipment. You're gonna identify a lot of problems in this video and uh, I'm guilty of a lot more than you can even see. So I really wanna talk about that and hopefully everybody can learn from my mistakes. Yeah, I'm okay. Hey, battery 
I'm communicating. Driver. Hey, you okay, man? Okay. I got set my balls. Your balls? Okay. All right. I can live with that. Okay, uh, you know, that video was very brutal, I think, uh, but I can tell you, inside the car, it did not, it was not bad. And I cannot thank myself for that. I have to thank Ford and the fact that I still had airbags in the vehicle because I made so many safety mistakes on that run, it's ridiculous. And the worst part was, uh, you know, I knew the car was acting up. So if you're ever gonna wear all your safety equipment, knowing you're going down the track in that powerful of a car that has not made a successful pass at this power, it was crazy of me to do what I did. First mistake, my visor was up. Huge problem if there's a fire or debris, glass, any of that stuff was not a factor, but that does not mean it couldn't have been. Uh, same thing with the gloves. Fire probably would have had huge issues. Uh, Lyle's video from years ago in the Corvette, look what happened to him. I watched that video, I, it hit me hard. I was like, I'm gonna be super serious about safety, yet here I am making the same mistakes. So. You cannot just say once that you're gonna do it. Every time you get in the car, you have to do it. Another huge problem, I might not even be sitting here if it was not for that airbag. I did not have my neck protection on. I use a next gen, super simple to put on, very comfortable. Why was it not on? I can't tell you. But considering I was fully strapped in, without that neck protection, most likely my neck would have hyperextended, and I'm no doctor, but I believe you can become paralyzed that way, break your neck, all sorts of things. Nothing happened. I had no pain after the wreck other than my hand from the wheel, uh, bent the wheel, and I just had like a little, I mean, it would be like if you punched a, the wall and the next day it didn't hurt. That and my, my man parts hurt from the submarine belt for about 20, 30 minutes after the wreck, and that's it. I had no ill effects afterwards. So I know a lot of people wanna know what caused the wreck. I can say right now that I have a few theories. I believe it was a few things. It wasn't one single thing and it was a culmination of a lot of things that turned into one bad situation that based on the data and the videos, I really feel like there was almost no way to save the car once I lost control. But we're not gonna go over those details now. We're gonna have an entirely different video, detailed data, and I am sending out the ABS module or restraint control module to pull off the crash data. For those of you guys that don't know, most new vehicles have a black box type of device that's gonna record all these things in an event of a crash. You'll get accelerometers, G-meter, wheel speed, steering angle, brake input, throttle input, all those sorts of things. That is going to be priceless, and I think by the time I get that, I will have a much clearer picture of what happened. Uh, but really what it comes down to is the car was heavily modified, and I believe it was 100% the car's fault. We do a walk down the track, uh, which we're gonna show you here in a minute, and uh, the track looked fine. Multiple people uh, made it down that lane without issue. You know, all racetracks have bumps and cracks here and there, but there was nothing out of the ordinary on that track uh, that could have caused it. So, you know, it was definitely something with the car, and we'll revisit that on the next video. Anyway, this box right here is going to really solve uh, the problem of figuring out, or at least I hope so, of what happened. Um, I was, uh, I had a lot of aftermarket parts on the car and I believe there was some conflict. One thing that people don't know about, and I'm not sure I knew this, but I spoke to somebody about it, the ABS can 
come on even if you do not hit the brakes. Sounds crazy to me. I did not know that was possible. I thought it was only when you hit the brakes, but with today's new vehicles, it can. Now, some of that might be tied to advanced track, and I had that off, and again, we're guessing, but with this, we will not have to guess. So, once we have this data back, we'll have the new video going over everything, the data log from the vehicle, detailed uh, parts of the video, and more importantly, this crash data. Anyway, check out the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Overkill is down, but is not out. At least if I have any say in it. But he is in rough, rough shape. Rough shape. Very, very rough shape. I'm gonna put it in the hands of a very good friend of mine and it's coming back, so. Our buddy Greg, uh, letting us bring it up to his house here just to get it out of the way for this week and then we're gonna get it up to Ohio get this unit fixed these are the uh, guys that are working the track and got it off the track for me so I just went ahead and asked them if they could take it up to Annis to Greg's house it's a temporary spot and then uh Get it where it's got to go. All the airbags went off. Um, obviously, uh, intercooler is gone. Most of the front end is gone. The engine looks to be okay, possibly. At least I hope so. That would be a big help. There's the, uh, the engines in there. I took the uh, inlet pipe off, actually. Uh, hey, babe, come here a sec. Brandy, come here. Just hold that light for me. There's the uh, inlet pipe. It's a little low flow at the moment. Anyway, that's what we got. Oil uh, filters messed up, but the fuel line broke, and uh, I'm hoping the engine shut off right away. And we'll see how healthy that is soon. Yeah. The carbon's almost worse. It's like super fine. You can't see it. Yeah. Oh, right after I keep going. Away, so. Oh. All right. So here's the key. What are you trying to do? No, I dropped the cord, but my hand's too big. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready to take off and I figured I would do a walk up the track since Houston Raceway is no longer. This was the last race ever and uh, I also kind of wanted to see where I wrecked and hit the wall. I don't think these guys will care if I go up there. I haven't raced here a bunch, but a few times for this race, and uh, kind of sucks. Very, very nice facility. Really stinks to see such a great track ripped up. The surface is still great. Lots of really fast passes this weekend. The weather was certainly good for that. Not much else. It was cold, but it was also raining most of the time. I think it might have been right at this. There's a, there may be a transition at the eighth mile or somewhere up here that uh, 
upset my car more than most or something else happened and then it hit that and we're trying to still figure all that out. That's why I'm walking up here too. There's a little transition right here, but I mean, that's just pretty normal. It's smooth, no problems there. Unless my car had a particular issue with that. I'll look a little closer and compare that to the video. That's before the eighth mile though, so I do not believe that's where it happened. It was after the eighth mile. I don't think that was it. This one's a little bumpier maybe. But no, it's, there's, no, there's no issue there. That's good. Yeah, I mean, look at how this, this is amazingly smooth, honestly, all the way up here. Look at this. So I don't think it was anything in the track. We're gonna keep going though. I think it was a little bit further up, like right around, could have been anywhere past here. But I see absolutely nothing that would tell me, you know, there's always little chunks missing out of any track like that, but that's normal. You know, there's a couple bumps right here, you know, you know, there's a tiny bump there. Did I have my car set up way too stiff and those few little tiny bumps upset my car? If so, then that's my problem, not the track. Based on walking it this far, I know what happened before this, so if anything happened that set it into motion, that was the track. It wasn't the track's fault. Something on the car was messed up and the littlest, tiniest bumps upset it or something like that because this, considering this track is getting destroyed, it's awesome, so. That was also a nice final walk of the quarter mile. Here's the finish line. Never again to measure an ET. So sad, so sad. All right, let's see where I missed the wall up. There was quite a bit of racing after I was done, so uh, or after I hit the wall. So I doubt there's any like, I'm guessing this is it. I don't know though. I kind of remember just going out that gate up there. Um, I might, oh, that's right, I hit it twice. So this is the first hit. This has got to be the first hit. <clears throat> I have no idea what that is. pretty good <laughs> it was a hard hit oh yeah this it might, it's probably from like right there oh, yeah. yeah unfortunately it looks like I hit it where there was probably a seam you know it was covered over but I cracked it right at maybe a seam which maybe made it worse and then and uh, I don't know if I bounced across. Yeah, that's probably where I hit it the second time, maybe. I don't know. This looks more probable. Maybe. Yeah, this is it right here because you can see the scrapes in the pavement here. So I hit over there. And it bounced, I think, here. And then these are the scrapes in the pavement. You'll see in the video where I just slid for a good distance. And then I wound up pretty much right here, I think. Because it was, uh, got out of the car and went right out this gate. So, yeah, I'm guessing uh, possibly it was these marks here. Yeah, this might have been it. Yeah, you can 
You can see it more clearly from here. So right there. Actually, you can see the incoming mark a little bit there now. There. Those are my scrape marks. And then the car came to a stop right about here. So, pretty crazy. Goodbye, Houston. Can't say you've been good to me, but it's been good, uh, good racing, and hopefully everything uh, for Texas uh, 2K in Dallas is a new chapter. Here she is. This is really the first time I got a super good look at it uh, in light. After the wreck, I kind of just put a cover on it, and then they took it away from the track at night. So let's take a look. Obviously, uh, this side of the car is very, very, very bad. This is the initial impact. The spindle was gone, broken. Everything is broken on this side. This is a real big issue here. The A pillar is pushed in. Um, I want to go ahead and look inside there in a few minutes because uh, I do have some cuts on my leg. I'm not sure. I'm very clumsy. I hurt myself all the time, so I'm not even sure if it came from that. If you look into the engine, it looks like the balancer was not touched. The bracket for the Hellion uh, oil pump for the turbo kit is bent. The crazy thing is, we're not even sure what's holding the engine up. Probably the twisted K-member and all of this mangled mess is what's holding it there. Uh, as you can see right there, the motor mount on that side, it's broken. I mean, there's nowhere for it to mount to anyway. And then if you come over here to this side, same thing, there's the motor mount. So I'm guessing, uh, I don't really know. We don't know. Um, it could be that maybe the frame rail bent in such a way that's underneath the engine holding it up. That might be it. Uh, the transmission cross member is also broken, so not really sure how it's staying up. Let's look inside. All right, so for those of you that are curious, uh, the curtain side curtain airbag came down. All the airbags that were still in the car functioned. We were unsure, honestly, if that would even work with the seat unplugged, but now we know. So the driver's airbag was most important. Um, look at that, boy. Look at the steering wheel. I was definitely, uh, I believe that was probably my hand. If you see in the video, I punched the window. I'm not sure if that's why it cracked, but I did uh, get some cuts on my, on my hand. Even down here, the uh, lower, airbag went off um, you look here this is the cage down here everything is 100% in place um, you actually can't see any any light out of there I don't know if I pull the carpet out we'll do that later we're gonna go ahead and strip this interior out and get it ready on the back I mean, every, pretty much every corner of the car is hit bad. Um, there's an outside chance that wheel is uh, okay, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe send that back to Forge Line to get checked. I mean, I guess possibly both wheels are okay. I don't think so, though. Uh, that wheel is bent or something's bent in the back, so who knows if the rear end, the whole uh, rear end setup is, is okay. There might be some bent arms. I mean, looks like the door is 100%. That might be the only panel on the car. Well, we'll call that 100%. There's a couple nicks there. So, you got one door, and I can't call that door good. The roof, we'll consider that a body panel. There's two body panels. 
Man, look at that mint trunk. It's a mint trunk. Wing. Rear bumper. It's a little scuffed, but usable maybe. Carbon in the rear on the rear balance is usable. Yeah, maybe the rear bumper. Eh, that might be usable. That's about it. Oh, look at this. Carbon side skirts. Almost perfect. That's just PPF, maybe. Man, there's a little damage there. I bet you those are repairable, though. Probably repair those. I'm learning how to repair carbon fiber because I'm very good at breaking it. Um, I don't think that that side skirt is usable because it's not there. I don't know where that went. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, we got at least four to five parts on the entire car that are usable. So let's rebuild it. I think that wheel looks fine. <laughs> I mean, it has a lot of spokes. You won't eat them all. That's right. Wow, look at that right there. Oof, don't touch that. Be no, careful. Really I just accidentally touched it like an idiot. <laughs> this one fared much better than the other one. Unfortunately, um, I don't blame anybody for this. The night of the accident, I uh, left the piece of this wheel outside, and it was super close to the garbage can, so either somebody stole it or it just got picked up by the garbage guys. Not... Not anybody's fault. I should have put it away. Uh, one other thing I don't think I showed you guys yet. That also got taken with the wheel, but I have another piece of it, is the uh, carbon ceramic brake rotor. Check out that unit. So, I don't know if the other side's okay or not. Once he gets the wheel off, we'll know. It doesn't matter. It's probably not getting... Uh, factory breaks back when it goes together. Yes, it might. Working through getting all the fuel lines and stuff, everything up here is in good shape, so I think we'll be able to reuse it. Any of the fuel lines over here were smashed, but. A little bit further, the intake manifold's off. Uh, everything up here looked fine, which I would expect. It looks like the engine may be being held up uh, because the frame rails are, are like kind of squeezing the engine on the turbo headers. As you can see here, where the frame rails pushed in, it's pushed in on the uh, headers is actually, that's kind of interesting. Look at the uh, dent in the header right there. Sorry, I was looking at it, not the camera. It's a nice little dent in the header there. So at some point that frame rail, oh, you can see where the frame rail split right there actually. Right there. So that got pushed over into that header. And I think it's squeezing the whole motor tight to, uh, that's what's holding it up. Well, here's a better look at the frame rail. They are not supposed to be that close at the end. They're not even close. So guessing that's probably what's holding the engine in. So right there you can kind of see it's holding uh, on the valve cover there. All right, Steve went ahead and put the car up in the air. Both frame rails are split right there, as you can see. So that's what's holding the engine in right now. Same thing on this side. So yeah, there you go. You can get a good look at it right there. It's basically just pinching the engine. So we got to figure out how to spread the frame rails apart and should just drop right out. All right, there's another uh, deal here, as you can see. There's the uh, cross member where it bolts in. It broke right there. The other side isn't all the way broken. It's bent. That's partly what's holding it up. The drive shaft, which I didn't expect necessarily to live because the wrecked car that I bought, which had a front end collision, uh, it shattered the drive shaft. So we're good there. Back here, the wheel looks out of alignment with the body. I'd say something's definitely wrong here because the rear end is not straight. All right, just being a little bit of a bitch. She doesn't want to come out, so. 
I'm going to use a sledgehammer. All right, we're getting close, Steve. What do you think? It's going to come out? I think so. A couple of things hanging us up. Well, this is going incredibly smooth. Uh, this is exactly how to remove an engine from a 2020 GT500. If you need my help, just give us a call. Paul meets Dino. All right, she's out. What time you got? Let's see. It took us uh, just a couple hours, but somebody took the hood and wheels off for us. Start, so that made it quicker. <laughs> oh. Oh, I forgot there was hood on it. I was joking. I meant the wreck. But. Uh, overall, it's really impossible to say for sure. Uh, the biggest possibilities of a cracked block would maybe normally be the, the motor mounts, but I did switch to a BMR K member, and this is no reflection on a BMR at all, but any tubular K member is probably not going to be as strong as a factory piece, and that may have helped the block, in my opinion. This motor mount broke at the mount end, but it's, both motor mounts are still bolted to the block. So that's good news or bad news. So it means I had a lot of leverage to crack it or it wasn't really anything there. Uh, let's look in the diaper. It's pretty dry. I don't really think I lost too much oil except when the oil filter broke. Uh, but even the drive shaft is okay, which the car I bought that was wrecked did not. Waste gates are okay. I mean, the turbos spin, but most likely we'll just go with new turbos. Uh, Downpipes actually look okay. This manifold is uh, smashed. I mean, if you really wanted to fix it though, I don't think it'd be that tough. Was it? Yeah. Good, good, good. This manifold is a little scratched, but I mean, I wouldn't reuse this stuff just cause I like nice stuff, but it would not be a big deal to just fix the headers. So if you really were trying to spend as little as possible, I obviously want it to be nice though. Uh, Steve said the oil, uh, did you look at it? Yeah, the oil looks clean. We'll probably drain some once we get it further down. Uh, the oil pan to get into a little bit right there by something, but it's not broken. This is the, as far as the engine, this is the only damage that uh, we saw, which at the same time that broke, most likely the fuel line was ripped off. So that could have been my factory's fail safe. Now if this is out, let's look in here a little closer. Oh yeah, wow. Woo baby, look at the inside of that frame right there, dude. Yeah, so that bent, when this bent in, I'm guessing that hit the bell housing. Well, the whole shock tower is pushed in the back. Yeah. Maybe I could sell this to a guy that wants a stanced GT500. That would definitely help, right? I think Lots so. Lots of camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as fixing it, uh, I'm not a body guy. And, you know, I, everybody's like, oh, just cut it off the firewall and start from there forward. But that's definitely, you know, not going to help with that plan. So not only do we have to do that, that has to get all fixed. I mean, this is going to be crazy you know one thing that uh we kind of overlook in these sorts of accidents is uh what could have happened in a different vehicle or if it was set up different and i think this area really tells a big story because this is where i hit the wall pretty much dead on maybe a little bit of an angle <laughs> and uh look at how this just crushed in perfectly i mean if you look at it really well it zigzagged right it goes out then in, you know, and that is what absorbs all of the impact instead of it going into my body and having this whole entire piece push in on the driver. Now, of course, I did have a cage in the car, so even if we didn't have the crush area, I probably would have been okay. Uh, but uh, my wife asked me this morning, you know, when somebody had mentioned putting a tubular front end on it and how that would have reacted in the crash and I would guess that that certainly would be more dangerous. Now, there's no reason to not do it in a race car, but in this case, I think it was very beneficial to just have a factory front end because it looks awful, but I look fine. And that's probably the moral of the story and how the crash zones work in the first place. Here's another very interesting view. Uh, you can't see it too well because the uh, 
Well, you can still see it. The fuse box is in the way, but the strut tower on that side is below the fuse box, and the one on this side is way higher, probably at least four to six inches higher. So this whole side was pushed up and pushed in. You know, a lot of people, after they saw the wreck and you hit the wall in the first hit, and then you think, okay, that's it. And then why, why isn't he doing anything when it's headed into the other wall? It's like, I didn't even have a wheel on this side. I tried. When you see the in-car video, I was steering it until the very end, which is bad. When you know you're gonna wreck, the first thing you should do is let go of the steering wheel. I did not, and I am super lucky I didn't break my wrist after seeing it. I did punch the windshield, but luckily I have very strong knuckles, I guess. Here's a good look at the wheel that uh, quote unquote survived. It didn't survive, but it almost looks like a regular wheel. As you can see where this one failed, uh, I have pictures of the other wheel. Like I said, I accidentally left it near the garbage can and either somebody stole it or they picked it up for garbage. But uh, if you, when you, well, first off, you can see that uh, the red paint tells you that uh, it got into the brake caliper, which is probably what happened on the other side. And the other wheel failed almost identically here where it broke all the way around. <clears throat> Nobody ever saw this piece at all, like not even remnants of it. In the video, you can see kind of like an explosion of a tire. So maybe it just literally disintegrated. Um, and then on the other side, pretty much uh, just as bad. So this will make a nice souvenir. Check this hood out. I mean, obviously it's destroyed, but I'm kind of impressed with uh, how it held up. Crash, if you saw the video, I don't know if I have it on video. Somebody does. We tried to open it up right after the fact and the hood pin was still good and the hood latch was still attached. So, pretty nice hood considering it's empty. All right, we almost got it all the way apart. Just disconnecting the transmission right now. Uh, everything looks surprisingly good. Uh, thought this was pretty interesting here in the diaper. There's quite a bit in there. Uh, well, not quite a bit, very little actually. But maybe that helped the track, I don't know. We didn't lose much oil. The transmission is disconnected. The turbo kit is off. Uh, you know, obviously the turbos took some uh, damage, but they spin perfectly. I wouldn't run them on a car without checking them out, and uh, they might need some reconditioning, but most of this is usable, I'd say, except the headers that have some dents in them. Transmission seems to be 100% clean and unhurt. The big one is, let's lift this thing up. We looked, obviously, at the oil pan already a little bit, but... I want to take a closer look. As far as we can tell, we may have dodged a bullet here because I don't see anything on the oil pan. This is casting mark there. There's a couple black marks on the front here, uh, you know, Something obviously hit there, but some of it might, you know, that's just actually like part of the diaper, off the uh, diaper here, which was wrapped around it. It wasn't even uh, on there. So some of that just might be transferred from the diaper, from like strapping it on it. It may not have been with the wreck. I mean, now this was a brand new, or just uh, re-cleaned before it went in. That's why it's so clean. Uh, yeah, I mean, this side over here, we got a bunch of like debris. Wonder what that is. Oh, you know what that is? It's part of the wall. Almost positive. It's paint from the wall I hit. What do you think? Doesn't that yeah. look like house paint kinda? Yeah, the wheels are there. Yeah, so that's just debris from the wall. We'll take that. Obviously the alternator uh, bracket broke. So we want to look around where it broke, see if that broke anything else. But uh, this is a pretty tough engine, it looks like. All right, looks like the oil is okay. 
I already taped this once. We still have more oil coming out. I think I didn't hit record. Uh, anyway, oil looks great. The only damage we found at all related to the engine assembly, I call it, not even an engine, but uh, this bolt and one of the shorter bolts that was holding the oil filter uh, deal on, uh, the bolts were broken. They came out, uh, the block looks okay. This boss is broken because the oil pump, the turbo hit, turbo kit got hit and that bracket broke that and then the alternator bracket. So if that's all it is, then uh, I'd say it's pretty much unharmed. Well, here's most of it. I feel like I'm walking up to a swap meet in 20 years and some old guy, which is me, is gonna tell you how awesome the 2020 GT500 is while you pull up in your fine car. Anyway, these are all the good parts mostly, which some good parts there. The trans is good, the engine's good. Most of the turbo kit is good, intake, fuel system. Here's most of the bad stuff. I'm gonna keep the wheel, but obviously it's bad. Almost all this stuff is bad. Water pump, there's a couple good things there. Here's a closer look at the uh, front end of the car, how much it just tacoed. You can see the tie rod over there is bent 90 degrees and the K-member is all flipped and twisted and there's the motor mount on the underside. Pretty, pretty bad. All right, here's a better look at the K-member. Uh, the spindle looks okay. That's about the only part on the whole thing. I mean, look at how bent the tie rod is. The real carnage is on this side, of course. This is the initial impact. I'm trying to even like understand. What it's supposed to look like. Oh, okay, so this piece. Oh, this, okay, so this one's completely broken. This, this cross piece here. So that's supposed to come over and then this would be up and then this would go up to the frame, this piece, maybe. Man, it's like a puzzle. Oh, that's the front and this is the back. Oh, so it's completely flipped. That makes sense. Yep, that's why it was confusing. Yep, the back links. Yeah. Wow. Now, <laughs> makes you wonder what would have happened if I had a stock one in there. I could be wrong, but I would think the wreck would be worse, maybe. I don't know if this helps or, or hurts. I, I think the stock one was uh, reinforced in certain areas that it's meant to take that like, like an Right, but what I'm saying is, is if, if, if this been, didn't bend enough. as much as this, would there be more damage other oh, areas? Right. Like the yeah. disabsorb? You probably would have bent the arms. Yeah. Hey, of never seen the inside of that. <laughs> yeah. There's some electronics in there. Yeah. Right. Master tractor operator. All this hooked up. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out. You're good up there, you're good. You got tons of room. I shed my first tear on this bad boy yesterday. 
Kyle uh, tagged me in a picture of the car going down the track, which was most likely the same pass I wrecked on. And it just was such a beautiful car. I, I really did tear up. And it's not about the money, it's about the time and effort. Not just by me, but by everybody who's touched this car or helped with it or gave me a deal on parts or anything really, advice on it. It's just, uh, the car represents a lot. You know, based on what we've seen, I know in the beginning, right when it happened, I was talking about rebuilding it. Um, if we were evaluating things from this side of the car, it's somewhat realistic. But the first impact was so bad. Um, it's just, other than sentimental value, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I got a lot of thinking to do. I do not want to trash this car but I'm not sure it could come back the way it was so we got to decide what we're gonna do anyway over here we got uh, the engines ready to go back to TKM and uh, all the parts that are somewhat salvageable the seats the trunk with all the carbon on it carbon dash pieces all some this is mostly all the interior stuff so Headed back to the RV and load it up and head back to Florida. Mm -hmm.